Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to my channel, Pediatric Classes. Uh, today, uh, we are going to discuss about another topic. Uh, hope you are all staying safe. Uh, last video, we are discussed about monkeypox. One of the close differential diagnoses was uh, hand foot mouth disease. So, I brought so many requests uh, regarding uh, another class on hand foot mouth disease. And ha that's why I uh, have this uh, session exclusively for hand foot mouth disease and a close differential diagnosis, herpangina. So, these two diseases we will actually discuss now. So, about the uh, reference for this. I'll be using the IAP STG guideline, that is the standard treatment guidelines, which are really good ones. Uh, so in this context, I would like to thank uh, Ramesa, our IAP president, Central IAP 2022, then our IAP president, Ilai, Pendra sir, Piyush Gupta sir, Avinit Saxena sir, all for the initiative. I'd also like to place on record my hearty thanks to uh, the lead author, Narayana Pandi sir, and the co-authors, Dr. Shailendra Kedas and Dr. Bakulish Chauhan. Uh, with this, uh, we'll go into the uh, guidelines. In this guidelines, actually, they discuss hand foot mouth disease and a bit about herpangina also. So, hand foot mouth disease, actually, uh, if you see in the last two or three months, it's been like lots and lots and lots of cases of hand foot mouth in uh, street. So, this is a clinical syndrome characterized by oral inanthem and a macula, macula, papula, or vesicular rash of the hands and feet. Mostly, it is caused by Coxsackie virus A16 and also enterovirus 71. But whereas, what is herpangene? Herpangene is a benign clinical syndrome, but there is fever and there is a painful papula vesicular ulcerative oral inanthem. So when you see actually the throat, there you can see so many ulcers in the throat. So coming to the difference in the etiology of hand, foot, mouth and herpangene, as you can see, uh, this, uh, sorry for the clarity, this thing I could have copy from the guidelines. So hand, foot, mouth disease is Coxsackie virus A2, A4 to A10, A16, B2, B3, and B5. Whereas uh, herpangene is Coxsackie virus A1 to A6, A7, A8, A9, A10, A16. This actually, this slide is really important for those uh, preparing for the neat entrance exam or for the uh, post PG exams. Here, one uh, thing we please note, enterovirus A71 can cause both hand foot mouth disease and herpangina, even echo virus, but only there's a slight changes in the strain. So almost the, if somebody asks you the positive organism, it is like Coxsackie also can cause both, enterovirus also can cause both, and even echo viruses can cause both. Only thing is the difference in the strains. So, how does it hand foot mouth disease spread? See, this disease has only one carrier that is humans. The disease is spread by fecal, oral, 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 or respiratory droplet contact. So, incubation period is around uh, three to seven days. So, when is a patient most infectious? That is in the first week of illness. But these active viruses can be shed in the stool for around four to eight weeks. Uh, I am really sure that one thing we are seeing previously there used to be a gap between the diseases uh, like for example suppose a child has got a hand foot mouth this is now they may be examined a little later there is a but of late we are seeing even gap of two weeks three weeks one month that what children are getting recurrent infections uh, of hand foot mouth so what is this pathology or pathogenesis of this hand foot mouth disease So please note here, this is oral ingestion of the virus that is shed from the GIT or respiratory secretions of the infected animal, uh, individuals or contact with the vesicle fluid. So there are three places, either from the contact with the lesions or to a GIT secretions if you are getting uh, contact or through the respiratory secretions. What happens is these viruses replicate in the submucosal lymphoid tissue of the intestine, pharynx, and then it spreads to regional lymph nodes. And all these sites, Replication will lead to minor viremia. Then it will lead on to infection of the reticular endothelial tissues and multiple organs will be involved like CNS, heart, liver, skin, etc., etc. And this will actually lead on to clinical manifestations. Further replication of the disseminated size will go on to have a major viremia and this will cause the formation of tight specific antibodies and the death of the infected cells with inflammation and necrosis. See this, the clinical features. So, uh, one thing is a low grade fever, they will be there. They may have a sore throat. They may have malaise with macular, papular, 
or papillary vesicular rash on the hands and soles of the feet. See, the name is a very self-explanatory. Hand, mouth, this is the same. There may be lesions in the hand, foot, and the mouth. And they have painful oral ulceration. See these lesions? There are small, small lesions seen in the hand. There can be mainly what will happen is generally the children are brought to OPD. They say mother will, uh, with the complaints of irritable cry at night. So what happens that they, the onset of the lesions, they may have severe itchiness and even throughout also sometimes. So uh, the children will not be able to tell each other. Small babies will start crying. So later, next day, the mother's parents will notice that small, small lesions have actually come up in their hands and foot and all those places. See, the oral ulcerations are really painful. So they may actually bring the child with complaints of not feeding well. Or drooling of saliva. Many times in OPD, what we see is they just say, uh, we don't know, a child is uh, like having drooling of saliva. When you open the mouth, you see multiple throat ulcers. So this is another thing. So these are the images of the hand foot mouth. This is which we saw. Okay. And another thing is that the, the lesions can be seen even in the uh, legs. And I told you, can differ. So we start like a small macules and then we actually become uh, papillar vascular vesicular also. So initially it is 2 to 6 millimeter in diameter. They have, have an ultimate value. Many a times if one or two, the parents may consider that as an insect bite reaction also. And they evolve into vesicles that rupture and leave painless shadow ulcers that do not scar. What happened with the oral anthems? The oral anthems are really painful. They affect in all areas, especially the soft palate and also the posterior oral cavity, um, the tongue, buccal mucosa, etc., etc. But the problem with this is the severe pain is that children will refuse to eat anything that they may get to have dehydration too. These lesions resolve in 7 to 10 days. See, this type of lesions can be seen in the palate, even in the throat, around the mouth, etc. Patients may have atypical skin lesions, including hemorrhagic or purpuric lesions, bullae and pustules. That they can may have a trunk, cheek, or genital involvement, palm and sole of foofy discomation. We have seen that the parents after the disease, the, the skin is peeling off, and we see that whole skin is getting peeled off from the palms of the soles. So this is discomation is really common in a hand foot mouth disease, and sometimes. There, what we see is there is accentuation in the areas of atopic dermatitis, and this is called eczema coxacica. There is a nail matrix RS, which is reported in small group of children, and then blue lines. There is a transverse ridging or onychomedesis, that is shedding of the nails. It will be seen following HFMD. That is around three to eight weeks. So many times we see sometimes the parents may just bring the child and say there is shedding of the nails. So once we say we may think that it is fungal and but don't they, you just look into the both the upper limb and the lower limb and both upper limbs. So if all the fingers are involved and there is a, you ask the history for hand, foot, mouth and if it is positive definitely we can consider that this is onychomatosis and uh, that's what is setting in. So, Oxaki A6 is responsible for relatively severe atypical HFMD and herpangina affecting the adults and children that is characterized by fever, generalized rash, that means face, proximal extremities, sprung, in addition to hands, feet, and buttock, pain, dehydration, and desquamation of the palms and soles. So, neat aspirants, please note this is a very important question. What is the causative organism for atypical HFMD? That is Oxaki virus A6. Now, a few words about herpangina. Herpangina is characterized by sudden onset of fever, sore throat, dysphagia. Again, the parents may bring the child to you saying the pain child is not eating well or there is a drooling of saliva. There will be seen painful lesions in the posterior pharynx. Headache and backache may occur in older children and vomiting and abdominal pain is seen in around 25% of cases. See this oral thing, you can see so many painful ulcerations in the oral cavity. Characteristic lesions are present in the anterior tonsillar pillars, soft palate, uvula, tonsils, posterior pharyngeal wall, and occasionally the posterior buccal surfaces. Lesions are discrete 1 to 2 millimeter vesicles and analysis. They enlarge over 2 to 3 days to 3 to 4 millimeter, and they actually they will be surrounded by erythematous ruins. They may go even up to a size of 10 millimeters. So it's like a little bigger one. The number of lesions ranges from 1 to more than 15. Generally, it is around 5. Fever actually lasts around 1 to 4 days. And the resolution of the symptoms is at 1 to 
around three to seven days. That is around a week. It may take for the resolution of our pangina. So how can you confirm the diagnosis of HFM? It is clinical diagnosis mostly. So if you really want to find it out, the virus can be detected in the stool for about six weeks after infection. However, shedding from the oropharynx is usually less than four weeks. Throat, stool and vesicular fluid samples should be obtained for cell culture or nucleic acid amplification or PCR. So where are the specimens to be collected? Please note this from the stool. You can collect from the throat swab or you can actually collect from the vesicular fluid also. So if you have listened to my previous video on monkeypox again, there also I have told that there is a skin lesion scan. The lesions also can have to be sent for uh, testing. We have to send the uh, blood, blood if you have to check the, if anything is there, we have to get the virus out of the not clinical diagnosis if they want to finally confirm the diagnosis or like if you, theoretically if it's but more in this HFM, you know we generally don't do any investigations but if you really want to isolate the virus take it from the throat uh, swab or get a stool from the stool you can check it or from the vesicular fluid samples what are the close differential diagnosis for this condition after ulcers herpetic gingivus dermatitis varicella Varicella, please note, varicella, this hands and mouth more involvement will be a uh, little less there. Then, uh, measles, arthema multiforme, rickettsial fever, scabies, Steven Johnson syndrome, monkeypox, etc. There are so there are lots of differential diagnoses, and you may have to differentiate it between from the hand for mouth when the patient comes to you. So, this is another theoretical question. How can we differentiate HFMD and varicella in biopsy? See, when you see the light microscopies of biopsies or scrapings of vesicles, that if you see the light microscopy, what is the difference is both will have multinucleated and giant cells in smears taken from moist skin areas when exposed, when a vesicle is removed. That's called giant smear. Okay? But in HFMD, that giant cells will not be seen. See, uh, based on this varicella or herpes, will have the giant cells. This HFMD uh, may not have the giant cells. So what about the management of the condition? The management is mostly supportive. It is directed towards the relief of pain. There is pain, you have to give some, generally we give some local anesthetic. We can apply over the mouth gel. Then fever, paracetamol should be given, adequate oral hydration should be ensured. Um, all this uh, supportive treatment is the main treatment of HFMD. Another thing is if there's so much of itching or something, you're going to give a calamine lotion uh, for the uh, itching. So you can even, if it is really bad, you have to give some antihistamines also. Admission and IV fluids may be required if the child is able to take orally or the child is dehydrated, critically ill or in case of CNS or cardiac complications. Pain and fever can be managed by endocytes and acetaminophen, but it is preferably avoided in children with dehydration. What I said is the prognosis of HFMD. The prognosis of HFMD is really excellent. Most of the cases recur with, recover within a few weeks without any residuals. Equally, acute illness starts for around 10 to 14 days and some may develop serious complications too. So this is why generally we should actually uh, tell them uh, if suppose a child in the class is having a hand food mouth, this is, it is better that okay, this children child, once it is carefully, uh, we need to send the child back to the school. Otherwise, it may affect the other children also. So what are the complications? See, persistent stomatitis with painful ulcers is one of the known complications of HFMD. They may have a CNS complications. is more common with enrovirus 71 than Coxsackie viruses. And a rhomboencephalitis disease is brainstem encephalitis, acute flaccid paralysis, aseptic meningitis, Cullen-Barre syndrome, acute cerebellar ataxia, and benign intracranial hypertension. All these things are seen in chaos complications in cases of hand foot mouth disease rarely. What about the lung complication, interstitial pneumonia, pulmonary edema, and pulmonary hemorrhage? Then cardiac myocarditis is a complication. Another complication is pancreatitis, onychomyelitis. I discussed that is the shedding of the nails. That is onychomyelitis. So how can we prevent the proper hygiene? That is hand washing after contact with patient and after diaper handling. Because I told you this virus can be shed in the stools. Disinfection of surfaces and toys 
avoid close contact and sharing of utensils and cups with infected persons and proper disposal of waste are the modalities by which this disease can be prevented. So, in short, in this session, we have discussed mostly about hand foot mouth disease and a few words about herpangina. So, uh, now we ne also need to differentiate between different diseases between hand foot mouth disease. In the coming up video, I will be discussing what exactly are the differences between a monkey pox and hand foot mouth disease. Uh, so, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and support my initiative. Thank you so much and stay safe.